We've had quite a few guests on with us, and uh, generally we, we like to talk to you because you've got a YouTube channel about YouTube and uh, okay. sort of about the processes you go through and how you guys organize your yourself as far as uh, who films and that kind of stuff, you know. So um, is there one of you that is kind of in charge of the channel or, is, or do you both work together? We both work together. I would yeah. say Pascal does the lion's share of the editing. Mm. Um, when it comes to filming, we've both got a different style of how we like to film. And when it comes together, then it makes really nice videos. I think mm. like I've, I, I really like using our SLR, our Panasonic camera to try and get that great B roll. And that's those filling shots that, that you don't really notice. They're not something you notice, but at the end of the at the end of the film, you might have been like, "Oh, that's that's got a bit of polish," you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like something I'd see in a documentary, and it's those little, it's the things that just uh, slip beneath your notice. So I like to shoot some of that stuff. And well, what Hasky, camera's that? I'm a bit obsessed with time lapses. <laughs> yeah, Passy's obsessed with time lapses at the moment. Um, so we're using a Panasonic GH5S. Which, a Lumix. Yeah, yeah, it's a Lumix. So it was it was pretty much made as a fairly low cost but high quality video camera. It's not it's, it's not still actually quite great. expensive. Yeah. It's like six thousand Australian, so Yeah. I think Jamie, Jamie Furlong was using the same one. You know what? Well, it's a great camera. If someone if someone does watch um, does watch this and they just hear that price tag and they're startled. We didn't start with this camera. That was what we got. We got that in We've got that in within the last year. So oh, yeah. we worked up towards it over two years. Yeah. So we were filming with a basic Canon 70D. 70D. Yeah, yeah so we that was my camera that we have. Yeah. You got the same? Yeah. I think for what we're doing, people only really need like a good sport camera that can get wet. Yeah. Right? And, and just, but try and focus on your sound because our audience is very forgiving of picture quality, mm -hmm. but just get that sound right. Try and eliminate the, the wind noise, you know, fuzzy mic or even having like, we've got a zoom H five sound recorder. Now we haven't used it to our, its best possible potential, but being able to put a lapel mic um, and shoot long, Getting good sound, it's it's really crucial. People will put up with a little bit of a crappy picture, but if if the sound is crisp, mm. it's so, so much less annoying. I think yeah. um, I think maybe hearing is uh, I don't know an older sense than sight, but yeah. if the sound is bad, it's it makes things almost intolerable. Whereas image you can do without. Um, but also, if people just remember, if if they want to be better filmmakers, just watch TV and just notice that um, shots don't pan around and run around unless they're like, you know, like those horrible horror movies where they mm. try and look like an amateur. <laughs> so just make those shots. Like if you're going to be editing it later on, so take, take shots for about 15 seconds, edit them down to like between five and 10 seconds and get good sound and don't zoom in and zoom out. <laughs> zoom, yeah. take the shot. And, um, but you can do a lot with a cheap camera, but get that sound right. Mm. Do you know that right many people that we spoke to said the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's How a very important the sound thing. was, yeah. Yeah. It's hard when you're vlogging or when you're on a sailboat because things happen spare at the moment. So pulling out the sound gear is quite hard. Like sometimes you can have it all hooked up to your camera, but we're often sailing and we don't have much space to store a camera and a mic or set up to grab. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we just have to let, like, just let it go and have bad audio because we don't have time to pull out the sound gear. Or just film it in such a way that's going to be suitable for doing voiceovers voice over, later. Yeah, you just yeah. know that the sound's going to be rubbish and you're going to have to do a voiceover with music later. Yeah. So just have that in your head and, and shoot like you would be editing. Uh, I, 
luckily because I've worked with documentary makers when I was on boats, I already had that sort of, I watched them behind the scenes, real professionals. Yeah. Like putting <laughs> together the stories and filling the shots. Long time, um, you know, like David Attenborough style videographers <clears throat> talking to them, you know, drinking with them after the day's shoot and everything and, and just getting that where the, that thought of like editing in your head as you're shooting it, giving the editor something to work with, make sure there's good lead in and lead out with the meat in the middle where they, you know, like, Mm. And just getting that um, good footage and making sure that you have, you know get your angles you know don't just don't just shoot everything like that try and try and be creative it's a work of art that you're making yeah and approach it like you're making art and make it like it's going to be on the internet forever yeah <laughs> yeah that's what when we started free range sailing um, we actually filmed for six months and put together the videos over six months so we were like really happy with. Even though they don't, we look back on them and they aren't that good, like we were still really happy like that what was going out on the net. We like didn't mind it too much. So, mm. yeah. How did you we find chewing through six months of data though? How'd you? That must have been a, an awful job, no? Oh, we were sorting it as we went, kind of thing for that six right. months because we were in WA and we didn't have internet or any way of uploading anyway. So we just had lots of hard drives and we had a, we have a bit of quite a good. Um, file management system where we yeah. label our footage um, in reverse of the date. So I don't know this might be useful for people that are trying to sort lots of footage vlogging. Yeah. So if we were if we were to label this chat, for instance, <laughs> all right, if this was a recorded, we might say that this is what's the date today? The eighth. So we mm -hmm. might we might label this twenty o five o eight, and mm -hmm. then the next day would be. 2005 09. So the date naturally puts Everything's things in, in sequence anyway. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll just have a very brief description, let's say, um, webcam chat, chatting to wind over water, webcam 24p for 24 frames per second. second. So when Pasky is editing later on, the dates will naturally have them in sequential order because yeah. you're not, you're not writing a script. You're just filming your life. Yeah. So it, it already puts it in a sequence. So the story is already told because you've lived your life. <laughs> yeah. So that's nice. Um, and then she can say, well, all right, here's what this camera is. I know the quality, what it's going to be. And I'll usually write like hundred megabytes. You know, what the, what the, the, what the sample rate. Yeah. Or HD. Or 4k or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. just, so we'll write the details of how the camera recorded the image and what frame rate, because if you record in different frame rates, you can either slow it down or, or whatever. Yeah, we had issues getting our head around frame rates when we were starting out as filmmakers. So, um, did, yeah, pan and pow, I don't know. It's starting to get really technical, but yeah, you need to get your head around these things if you want to start making good quality film. Just so. the, the, the crux of the matter is, Come up with a filing system and be meticulous and yeah. and, and be consistent. Don't change it midstream, yeah. right? Yeah. So we found that the date in reverse, a description, the camera, HD frame or rate. 4K or whatever it is, and then the frame rate. And when you come to edit, you just see that and you, you can find yeah. what you're looking for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What software are you folks using? DaVinci Resolve 15. You it's are. a free software. Yeah. Um, Highly recommend. Really, really great. Yeah, we, we just didn't... we just picked it up actually, and uh, oh yeah, I I um I found it. I have the Adobe Suite as well, and I found it a little bit over my head. I, I really had a hard time getting into it. DaVinci. Uh, yeah, yeah, really difficult. Yeah. But I I understand once you get it though, it's simple. Yeah. I think it is, and the they other they have good free tutorials on their website. On, so the, on their website, them. they've really, really mm. got good educational material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in light of that, we actually, I know we can. What we our level, we can do it all on the free software. But we actually did pony up just because and the, the company they put so much out there that we wanted to um, support them. So we actually. We've actually got a whole suit of features that we don't really use, but we wanted to support the company, so we paid for it. Yeah. yeah. But people can get it for free, and you can make a Hollywood blockbuster on the free version. Yeah, free, free version. version, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah we bought uh, a Mobile software thing? called Movavi. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we started with, and we've used it ever since. But uh, it's probably a lot simpler, like a lot more user-friendly, but it has all the bells and whistles we need. Oh, that's great. 
That's it. Yeah, you don't need anything too complicated. We yeah. started with Final Cut on our, my old MacBook, but then we yeah. switched off MacBook and went switched to PC. So mm. we didn't want to go. I'd used Adobe a bit and I just didn't like the Adobe suite. I don't like the Creative Cloud. So I just yeah. did, didn't want to go down the Adobe path. And we didn't want to, we thought we'd try something that was free and it's turned out fantastic. So. Yeah, yeah. We dove into Adobe for a while and it just, <laughs> yeah, so it was just way over the top. So, yeah. <laughs> Now, something you did early on uh, that I, I noticed watching, I went back and watched some of your really early videos and I noticed you did some stop motion. Oh yeah. Very start doing your maps with a boat and. Meant to yeah. do that in a public library as well. Yeah. You, you did it <laughs> in a public library? Any... Yeah, we did it in the public library really? in Darwin. We left Perth headed for Darwin in the top end of Australia a distance of over 2,000 nautical miles. Our first stop was to Abrolhos Islands, situated 35 nautical miles west of Geraldton. When we left Perth, um, it was beautiful, wasn't it? And we, we just set off on a, just a perfect day. We had no other space to do it, so we went to the public library and we asked them, can we please have access to your map catalogue? So they showed us to Where a, little, their maps were. a little dusty part of the library and then we put this thing out and we got a little book the little boat and I drew one on a bit of paper and cut it out and we, we sat <laughs> yeah. there while the librarian was just like, what are these are people? Doing? Why are they standing on my table? <laughs> That's wonderful. And then you, yeah. you, uh, you just lit it naturally. Yeah, but we didn't, um, we didn't expose it correctly. Actually, we should have manually exposed it, but it was on auto. So all the shots are different exposures. Yeah, when you watch it. Yeah. <laughs> we had to buy, uh, we bought uh, manual lenses for that, for that Canon. Yeah. And then ran it from a laptop and, and then you can really get a lot of control with it. But yeah. 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 Well, that's it was lovely. sort of going to be, it was supposed to be a little bit sort of rustic anyway, just to, that was part of its appeal. Like we knew that we were it, starting out, you know, it was like an automotive touring guide with a hand cut out drawn bit of paper. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. So well, I thought it was lovely. Happy, was lovely. happy that it looked like a home movie, but we were just in these amazing places. Yeah. 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 And they are home movies. Our families watch them, and that's we. Well, um, you've had uh, uh, twenty-two million views, man. So you <laughs> must have done something right. Uh, a lot of that's the new the latitude. The new latitude's about thirteen million. So <laughs> what's so that? One, one, there's there's one of one our, of, our one of our films called the Nude Latitude. Just because it was the Nude Latitude, it, it went completely bananas. And just like that, we said goodbye to the Northern Territory and headed east for Weeper in Queensland. Getting into the YouTube world, sex absolutely sells. You chuck a bikini on the cover and you'll get views. Yeah. There, I said to no Chris question. too, if we want to increase our, um, our subscriptions, I could always get a boob job. Um, <laughs> you don't want to go down that. Anyone that's looking you know at what? that one, We are yeah. so unlike that. That was, we were just <laughs> so funny. But I mean, we understand that that um, is what sells, but we kind of will not sell out to that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not even that it's going to be that productive because the audience, they're not really contributors. They're there to take. Yeah, that's right. If you, if you read the comments to, there's people that are doing it now and they're getting lots and lots of views, but if and you read those and subscriptions, but if you read the comments, like the, the people that you're attracting are usually the thirstiest men out there. And they don't have <laughs> that, the reason, the reason they're looking on the internet for naked women is because they don't really get to meet them in real life because their social skills are not very great. So when they get into a comment section, they are just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's really just a horrible, bad. it's just a horrible yeah. community. I couldn't imagine like when like we, a pack of wolves. Wolves. <laughs> when yeah. we pull into port and we meet our viewers, like we have a get together. And they're all such sweet and nice people. And I think it's, it's the reward for just like toughing it out, making good content and attracting people that way rather than the sex sales thing, because yeah. I'd probably be in jail. I would have, you know, someone would come up, ah, Tasky, I've been watching you. I'd just be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I suppose, you know what? You want to attract the people that you would like to have on board instead of pulling into a course, having to say, oh my gosh, all these creepy people I've attracted. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and not only that, we're making this for our families. Yeah. So this is, it's family friendly content because it's for our families. Mm. Yeah. Like our, fam- all our families watch it. And it was a big part of why we made it in the first place is so yeah. our little nieces and nephews can watch their uncle and auntie having adventures. Yeah. Well, oh, so what wonderful. are they going to think, you know, if it's, if yeah. it's all really sick and nasty? Yeah. It's no I don't know how some of those people sleep at night. You know, I watch the thumbnails they put up and, and then even the content, you can see where they're going with it. You can see what you can see. It's like, it's like, you know, it's a train wreck. It's, it's just, a, yeah, yeah. They're, they're totally trying to manipulate you into thinking with that side of the brain only. And you know, it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah. We, we, we recently uh, watched, uh, the big crossing you did, uh, over to Tasmania, I guess. Oh yeah. And, uh, and boy, oh boy, you had some, I, I, would have, I would have been down below in that. I would have not, I would have not survived it. <laughs> the following seas, it was almost like you were slipping down the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back oh. Up and Chris was almost yeah. nauseous watching. Yeah, it's just brutal, just brutal. We, yeah. get, we got a, a gimbaled camera, the Osmo Pocket. Yeah, and so it's, it stays put and it, let, it really shows what the, the boat's yeah. doing because... It keeps the horizon still, which we <laughs> never had before. And so yeah, that's I saw that you had it tucked it underneath your... Uh, uh, underneath your, uh, dodge, your, dodge, your dodge dodge. Yeah. 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 How do you like those little cameras? Yeah, they're great. Yeah. They're really good. Like, Tiny. um, I'll grab it the little screen, how you control it. That's not very good. I think if you've got the upgrade pack where you can actually control what the camera does is a lot better. And if you actually stuck it on a phone, you'd have a lot better control again. But I mean, the image quality is great and the gimbal is really good. But um, like anything, in the first couple of days, it might be a bit frustrating. But after about a week Once of playing with it, it. Uh, you you could you could get away with yeah. <laughs> it was Isn't it lovely? Yeah. What color is that? It's a. It's an Osmo Pocket. Osmo oh, wow. Pocket, yeah. Wow. Yeah. We'd like to get an upgrade for it. Oh, it's actually coming. They've got a selfie stick where you've got all the controls down the bottom, so you can really you can you can do it like you know a dolly dolly boom shots yeah. And yeah like a handheld drone almost because you can have it quite up high up yeah you can yeah. do some really crazy stuff you can control it down by the hand like the way the gimbal goes and you can put your phone so you've got a bigger screen you can really check it out so we're kind of excited because it just unleashes a bit more creativity yeah i think yeah. um you, you really want to be careful that you don't get so enamored by the technical capabilities of the camera gear and particularly drones are a big one and just let that carry your films you want to still be creating good stories um and just using the cameras to to catch the beauty of your surroundings rather than just trying to blow the audience's mind with like 14 hours of non-stop drone footage or something like that yeah yeah we 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 bought a lot of gear before we left but we didn't use a lot of gear like we used the sony that we liked Mm -hmm. you know sort of our go-to we used it all the time is that a point and shoot or an SLR? Yeah, no, it was a it was a Sony. It was um, any XF three, so it's a, a solid body, mirrorless, um, almost uh, the same kind of quality and control as a seventy D. Very similar. My favorite. It's nice and light. Yeah, I find the seventy D a bit heavy. Yeah, it's it's tough though. Like we're throwing the seventy D around, and it's gotten splashed and. Which is, I think it's a great camera to start with if you're going to vlog on a boat, a 70 yeah. day. You can, it doesn't die. Yeah. It doesn't die. <laughs> yeah. Canon makes tough gear. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's going to gravitate to their favorite camera. And also you, it'll change over time as well. Sometimes you're just like, oh, I'll put that camera down. Oh, really like muck yeah. around with this. And then you'll pick up your old camera and go, oh, I forgot how, yeah, yeah, yeah. how good this fits in my hand. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. We were able to buy, I think we bought all of our camera equipment used. Yep, Maybe. Oh, yeah. I think even to, did we buy our little GoPros? Even um, the GoPros, GoPros were yeah. used, yeah, 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 so, everything. Yeah. We're the cheap family. That's what our kids yeah. say, <laughs> even when they were little. <laughs> all of our GoPros and action cams are all, yeah, secondhand. And yeah. we just bought a new, we bought a new Sony action cam, but most of them have been secondhand, so. Yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. like one generation behind everybody else. Yeah. The best way <laughs> to do it, yeah, for sure. Oh, well, you're not, you know, you're not contributing to too much landfill and, 
the industrialization of the whole planet. So it's not well, you know, we, we, and we met a couple, uh, I, I've told the story with other interviewers, but uh, people were interviewed rather, but uh, we met a couple in Florida uh, from Canada. They're from Quebec and they're on this orange, old orange tub of a boat that they bought from somebody cheap and they're vlogging with their iPhone. And I'll tell you, their videos were spectacular. I mean, cinematic, hmm. just gorgeous right. stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And so you don't really need very much, you know, to make it happen. No, I think, um, I think your camera, and I think it comes down to that again, just make sure your sound's good. And just about everything now can shoot HD. Video. Yeah, my, my phone shoots really good footage. Yeah. No worries at all. For sure, yeah. Mm. Well, um, anyway, I'm sure we could keep you guys for hours, but uh, uh, we're going to uh, keep this short so we're not uh, overwhelming the editor. Um, <laughs> Who is uh, the editor? Is it you, Chris? Oh, or that's it... me. Yeah. That's yeah. Me. Yeah. But uh, we've had a lot of these interviews, and they've just been fantastic. So uh, I just want to say thank you, or we just want to say thank you uh, uh, for joining us. I know you guys are busy, and uh, we really wish you well in your uh, future endeavors, whatever they might be. And we look forward Thanks. to lots of new stuff coming from Free Range Sailing. Great. <laughs> yeah, I hope you hope you do well, and you build an audience of your own. Yeah, well, slowly but surely. Yeah, yeah, just chip away at it. Yeah, that's hope right. it helps. Happy sailing, fair winds. need to just not forget your camera next time shoot that squirrel nick in a potato probably yeah. go viral <laughs> <laughs> talk to me